thanks very much to The Pledge for their support. They provide effective financial planning advice. Ring the number that's shown on the graphic. Some people love them, some people are not so keen. I personally love Moonchester, the city mascot. What are your views on, on mascots? What I can tell you is I'm starting today's vlog here in Timperley, which is near Altrincham, near Manchester. And behind me you can see Frank Sidebottom, or at least a tribute to Frank Sidebottom, which was a character created by a local musician called Chris Seavey, who was in the group called The Freshies. And he actually was the original Moonchester. Moonchester who's changed over the years. I've had the pleasure of working with Moonchester and Moonbeam later at various Junior Blues parties, also at Sport Relief. I've danced with Moonbeam as a chicken and also abseiled off the roof of the Kipax. <laughs> So Moonchester and Moonbeam, and we go back quite a long way, us, us don't we? We've done, we've done paragliding things and junior blues and everything. Yeah, great to see you, Moonchester, Moonbeam, the city mascots, love them. Are you a fan of Moonchester and Moonbeam? Yes, yes, I am. I think they're really happy. I think they're really cheeky, and I think they're funny, and people just like them. Great having a mascot for the club, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think that uh, there should be more of them. Right? Yeah, yeah the fun, isn't it? Yeah. It's even better when you get a shirt pulled at you. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Were you a junior blue? Yeah, first started on going at the top floor of the Kipax. Vague memories of it, not the clearest, but I can remember going along there meeting. I think the first players I met there were Richard on, I think. I think Nedman knew about that might have been too late, that's when we was here. But yeah, that was when the first time I get into uh, and me, Uncle Steve, I take him up. But surely the highlight was meeting Moonchester, wasn't it? No, yeah, definitely, especially when you're a kid as well and you see him walking along and you usually walk past the players to go and see Moonchester. He's been a lucky mascot for City, hasn't he, if you think about it? And now Moonbeam's part of that as well. Yeah, Moonbeam's probably brought, brought a lot more than Moonchester. She's been around for more recent years, but yeah, definitely since he started, that's when we started getting good. So it says there that you, yeah. you were three years old, Liam, yeah. and you came up with the name of Moonchester, when it, presumably you came down from the Blue Moon. Yeah, well, um, I was three. Um, I looked up at my dad, he was a junior millions competition, I looked up at my dad and said, I think we should call him Moonchester. That's what happened. So when you see Moonchester well, on the pitch now, what do you think? Well, yeah, it's good. It's good to look down. I can tell my mates that, obviously, I named Moonchester. It's a good thing to say. Technically, it wasn't actually me who named him. It was my dad, but... Yeah, I can always say it was me and take the limelight for it, so yeah, it's good. You're not getting embarrassed then? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. <laughs> so you, you actually came up with the name then. Let's get to the truth of this. Well, well, no, Liam gets the credit. He's, he's officially the, uh, the person who named Moonchester, so I'm happy with that. It's, it goes to Liam. You're all blues. Yeah, we are. So yeah, yeah. A family of City fans. Oh, extended family. Part of the family. Part of the family. So what are you thinking today then? Uh, I don't, well, we're kind of expecting a comprehensive win every week nowadays, aren't we? But I think these are a good side, so you never know. 3-4-0 though, I'm going to go with. When Manchester comes out, you get all giddy. He does. He does. <laughs> 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 are, are you expecting a win today? Yeah, I reckon 4-0. Yeah, I reckon 4-0. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's get on with it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I reckon in the era of Moonchester and now Moonbeam, City have been lucky than ever been before, so it's all down to you, isn't it? Yeah, it's all down to me. Takes all the credit Moonchester's for Moonchester's dad, especially. All of you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Enjoy the game. Cheers, Cheers. Thank you very much. I was just explaining um, to a friend of mine that when you hear the chanting and you hear a bit of goading now from our fans, and I actually don't like that because we spent many years down below, you know, where, where we should have been. So I kind of think that we, we should enjoy it, but we shouldn't get carried away. No. We're City fans, so, you know, good, the bad. But the you're ugly. still expecting a win, aren't you? Absolutely. We're at home. Former. Why not? What are you thinking today, Julian? Yeah, obviously the way they're performing, so hopefully it's another win for City. I mean, it's Bournemouth, they play good football, they'll come and have a go, won't they? Yeah, definitely. I think Eddie Howe, a good coach, got them playing some good stuff, but I think that may play into City's hands and 
obviously they're not going to want to sit back and just contain City. They're going to want to express how good they are, and that could be devastating for them. You've got a challenger now to a left-footed centre back, <laughs> Mr. Laporte. Is yeah, that bad, is he? Yeah, no, he's decent, performing very well. I think we're reaping the benefit from. Obviously, him not going to the World Cup and, and playing every minute of pre-season and stuff like that. So yeah, he's doing well. Not as good as you. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, do you come to the game now expecting a big win or, well, or less? I always hope for a win, but everybody I speak to is saying 4 and 5 nil, and I'm like the old school, I, I don't believe we're going to win 4 or 5 nil until we do win 4 or 5 nil. I still worry about it. They should play open football, but they should, yeah. We, we should be good enough to beat anybody. I expect to win every time we come, but I never go on about 4 and 5 nils like they are today. So, there you go. Are you the same? Yep. I, I will like him. I always go for 4 or 5 nil. <laughs> You don't have a that... better anything, do you? Hey? You have a better no. anything? No. No. Ain't got the money to do that. <laughs> so just before kick-off, let's get a couple of views of the youngsters here in the family stand as to what the score's going to be today. And I bet you were excited last night, weren't you? Did you sleep no. very well? No. No, dead excited. And who's this who's it with you? Dad. Are you excited All right. Oh, absolutely over the moon. We can't believe we're here. It's an amazing place and we just come to see the best football in the country, if not the world. And he's the mascot. I mean, I've been talking to Moonchester today, yeah. who's the club mascot. Yeah. And today, Young Blaze is the club, the, the game mascot. Is yeah. he lucky? Is he? So lucky, it's a one in a million chance of it, so yeah, he's over the moon. You're, you're the mascot today, you know you've got to be lucky, don't you? You've got to blaze a path to glory, you like that? <laughs> Well, total domination by City. Uh, actually, the, the pace of the game, I think we were punished because we, we, we played the game a bit too slow and, and it gave Bournemouth confidence to, to, to go there at the end and score just before the end of the half. Still confident City will win it? Yes, I think you come out, you see the pattern be a lot more fast and fluid. Uh, and you see, again, you see Sterling making runs behind. You see Sonny making more runs in behind. And, and I think we'll create chances that way, but the tempo will definitely be raised. Right, a bit slow, not the best. Um, Bournemouth have come here to do a job and they're making it difficult to get through. One drops back from the midfield, so they're virtually trying to get through a wall of five. Come on! Hey, can we have security to get him out? Um, but I think second half, we'll, you know, we've got enough on the bench to uh, kill this game off. The game was a little bit in and out. I thought we played kind of all right for 25 minutes. Then we let Bournemouth come back into it. That's a bit of tiredness for Europe, whatever. But second half, El Mango comes on. What a player. So superb. Brings it down, plays the game. Pure class. Love him to bits. Look at the end. The beginning, first 20 minutes, fantastic. Then they slowed down a little bit. But then, second half, when they first came out, it was a bit dodgy. And then, when Delph, when Delph came on, it yeah. just suddenly changed. We could see that they yeah. thought a set piece would be their best opportunity, would have been a set piece. That was quite obvious from the throw ins and you know, the corner piece. It was a big, tall, great big, tall team as well. Very tall compared with ourselves. So, yeah. that was their best, that was their best thing, but it wasn't enough. We were too good at football for them. I found it difficult to choose between Sane and Raheem Sterling as my man of the match. Yes. Yes, definitely. Yes, I yeah. think you're correct. Spot 50 -50. on. 50-50. The two of them were excellent, yeah, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, excellent. Yeah. 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 I had to really push you when you go for them. Yeah. Sane. <laughs> <laughs> and Dito, Dito. Yeah. Poor start. A little bit uh, rusty around the edges, I think, but uh, came good at the end. 
Yeah, it all makes a difference when you've got players like Sane and Sterling about. They're a different class. But Bournemouth, good side. I'll tell you one thing, they're a damn sight better than the last team we beat 3-1 here. They came and tried to play Bournemouth, didn't they? They came and, yeah. And it, and it worked for a while. It worked for a while, but it's, it's just a matter of can you keep up with this constant pressure, pressure, pressure that Sane and Sterling pulling out wide do. And it's good, good work. Good work. Another day, another good day. Especially Sane, I think, making those runs down the wing. You can't really, you can't really match. I don't think there's any player better than him in the Premier League at the minute than Sane. Um, the only player close to him would be Sterling, I think. That run by Sterling, where he's taking on like five, six players all at once, is just brilliant. Like, can't really beat him. I think Jesus could be better, if I'm honest. Um, I think we might need another striker in January, maybe looking at getting someone a bit taller, I reckon, because we're putting in crosses. We've got Sane and Sterling putting in crosses constantly, and it's just going over everyone, because we've got like, strikers who are about five foot, whatever, and like we've just got all these great crosses going, and there's no one there. You're looking for, like, Eddie Jepo, the Grado, but they've all, they've all been sold. So, it's a bit useless, really. But, uh, but yeah, can't really complain if you're unbeaten, but I think it, there's always a improvement, really. That's where you're going to improve, that's where it's, it's all the strikers. It was, um, you know, it, was, it was one of them games, this, um, I said to a mate of mine, um, Bournemouth are never, never easy to beat. I know we've, we've pummeled them a few times here, but I really, really rate Bournemouth as a side. Um, really rate Eddie Howe as a manager. Um, I think he's one of the best young English managers out there. And they've got some really good young players. Brooks, uh, Wilson, you know, scored for England on his uh, on his debut the other week. So they've got a lot of um, got a lot of you know ported players that can that, that can do serious things and do serious damage in games. Um, and you've got to be really careful of that. No matter how good we are, we could have still been you know a lot more vulnerable today. Um, had we not have started to defend better uh, in this match. But um, yeah, I'm really satisfied Ian. But I did I did kind of say to my pal that if we didn't go two 0 up, uh, sorry, if we didn't go in at half time two 0 or three 0 up. Um, that Eddie Howe would, would kind of smell a bit of blood, so to speak, and maybe give his players a bit of a, a geeing up and tell them to come out and maybe attack us a bit more. The fact that Wilson got the goal before the half allowed him to kind of go in at half-time thinking we could actually get something from this game, which is quite dangerous. I think we looked a bit shaky at the back as well today. I, you know, I, I think, you know, people may agree, people may not agree. I think we missed Stones, uh, I think we missed Stones on the Porte's partnership today. It looked a bit disorganised at times and a bit, uh, a bit ragged, you know, the, the Bournemouth front... Front, front line ran us a bit ragged at times and, and pulled us all over the shop. But over the natty, and yeah, really, really, um, you know, really good performance second half. Uh, we came out, we redeemed ourselves for the first half performance. Like I say, a bit sluggish at first. Um, you know, scored three very good goals. Uh, Ilkay was fantastic. Bernardo Silva was my man of the match. I know Leroy got it, but I just think Bernardo, in David Silva's absence, Bernardo kind of makes David Silva's absence look less of an absence if you, if you get where I'm coming from he, he kind of makes it look like a, a, a good a, a good and an easy transition um, so I think that David Silva's going to rest easy at night knowing that when he eventually moves on that Bernardo's going to take his place in this squad not fill his boots because you can't do that but come in and kind of carry on David Silva's legacy so to speak so yeah three great goals 3-1 win uh, we carry on um, Everton at home next can't wait for that one I thought it was a brilliant game I thought we were great um, second half a lot better than the first half I thought Sane was absolutely magnificent tracked back went to get the ball back brilliant great game 3-1 and that's what I said the score would be at the end Was there ever a point where you were nervous? When they got that first goal back a um, little bit nervous but then I thought they'll come back and they'll win it 3-1 No, it's caused a lot of fixtures in uh, December isn't it? Yes Quite a few fixes in December, but I think we'll be okay. I think we should be okay. Can't see why there'd be any kind of problem. Not nervous at all. So I'm guessing you're quite happy with today's game, are you? Very happy, yeah. I was a bit nervy at the end of the first half, but it was good after that. You've come a long way, haven't you, for this game? Yeah, yeah. Well, we just came from France. We were, we were at the Lyon match in the midweek. So, yeah, and then, and then London before that for the West Ham match. So we made a, a trip out of it. Yeah, this is our yeah. first time here, so we got to see a, a really good win last <laughs> Saturday for our very first Premier League match, yeah. and then the, the draw midweek, and then the win today. So we're really happy. 
been very lucky. I've met a lot of um, American city supporters on the pre-season, oh, yeah. etc. You and me first from Washington. Is yeah. there a big group of city fans There's, over there? We have over a hundred of us. Yeah. So it's a, it's a really big group, and we we love having tons of supporters. We get visitors all the time, especially from here. So yeah. um, we're always happy to have people visit. Who yeah. was your man of the match today? Sonic, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah <laughs> clearly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, enjoy your trip so, back. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, we've had a blast here. Yeah. So yeah. we appreciate it. I tweeted out just before the game that uh, it was a bit of a gloomy day in Manchester, but I never felt it was gloomy when I was watching Manchester City, and that's certainly been the case again today. Although I have to admit that at times I was a little bit nervous, but City came through. Great performances by Leroy Sane and Raheem Sterling and all credit to Bournemouth who I thought were excellent. Uh, City, I suppose referring back to the beginning of this vlog about Moonchester and the mascot, I think City were on another planet today. Uh, see you next time back at Watford in midweek. Thanks very much again to De Pledge for their sponsorship. Read the graphic for more information on what they do.